talk about k-means, which is probably the most popular clustering algorithm. And I want to show you the steps for k-means, and then I'll walk through them with an example. Okay, so the steps are that we input the number of clusters and randomly initialize the cluster centers, assign all points to the closest cluster center, and change the cluster centers to be in the middle of its points, and repeat this until convergence. Okay, so that's those are the steps, and I'm going to walk through it uh, now with an example. Okay, so we take our data, which here is in two dimensions, so I can see everything. And then I input the number of clusters, which I happen to know is five because I can see the whole thing. In reality, when you have high dimensional data, you wouldn't know this, but that's okay. For now, let's just go with five. And then we randomly initialize the cluster centers. And um, these cluster centers were definitely not chosen well, but that's okay because they're going to move. And then we assign each point to the closest cluster center. And this produces what's called, called a Voronoi partition, where the space is divided up into different regions based on who is assigned to what cluster, what cluster center. Okay, so then I change each cluster center to be in the middle of its points and repeat this until convergence. And hopefully after a few iterations of this, you'll get a lovely solution like this one. And I should warn you though that it doesn't always work. It depends on where you place those initial cluster centers. And sometimes people try it uh, try running it a whole bunch of t like running it multiple times with different initial seeds to see if you can get a better answer. Okay, so that's the general idea. Okay, ready? Shall I let her rip? <laughs> All right, so let's pop those initial cluster centers on there and we're going to start iterating. Okay, this is after one iteration, two, and we're going to just keep going there. And that's the final solution I get after about 15 iterations. Okay, so that's, uh, that's k-means. Okay, so I want to talk to you about what k-means is actually doing. Um, k-means is actually uh, solving, uh, it's solving an optimization problem. It's minimizing an objective, and it's doing that through an alternating minimization scheme. So I want to explain um, what that objective is and how it's being uh, optimized, or approximately optimized. Okay, so... The input is the data and the number of clusters, which we assume we know in advance. And then um, the output is uh, the cluster centers, okay? And the goal is to minimize some objective, and that objective is related to the distance between a data point i and its cluster center ck. Now, really, we only care about the distance between the point and its nearest cluster center, because that's the cluster that it's going to be assigned to, right? We don't, we don't really care about how the point I relates to cluster centers of other clusters. We only care about its cluster. So um, I'm just going to put that min in here saying, well, only look at the distance between point I and its nearest cluster center. And then um, the cost is actually the sum over all data points of those distances to the nearest cluster center. Okay, that is actually the cost that k-means is minimizing. Now, k-means can't actually optimize this whole thing. Um, this is actually very difficult to optimize. And so I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. Um, I just want to mention quickly that in terms of what distance metric to use, usually we use the squared Euclidean distance. Um, most of the time, k-means is used for data that's kind of where the clusters are kind of Gaussian. And so Euclidean distance is usually a good choice. Um, but I will mention that the choice of distance metric actually really does matter in terms of what the solution is. All right, okay, so why can't, uh, why can't we directly optimize this thing? Why can't we fully optimize for those CKs? And the answer is that you don't know which points go into which cluster. Okay, if you did, you could simply just assign this cluster centers as the centers of each cluster and then be done, okay? Uh, so what you could try to do is kind of try all possible cluster assignments, and then just pick the best one. But the problem is uh, that's not a, a good idea because, you know, it would be fine if we had like 10 points and we were assigning them to four clusters because that's only 34,000 possibilities. But if you had 19 points and you try to assign them to four clusters, then you have 10 to the 10th different cluster assignments, and that's yucky, you know, we, we, cannot, we can't compute that many possibilities. So k-means is an approximation. Okay, so I want to take a look at this cost again. 
and it's a sum over the points. Uh, it's a sum over the points of the distance to the nearest cluster center. It's just adding up all those points one by one. And so I can just count the points up from left to right if I want to, which is why they're all turning red, because I'm counting them. But I could also count them a different way. Like I could, you know, just change the order in which I'm summing them up. I could count the points for each cluster one at a time. Okay, so that's that's fine. So I've now counted the points for one cluster and then the points for the other cluster. And I want to design a slightly more general cost function because I want to allow us to optimize the cluster assignments. So I want to optimize who is assigned to what cluster. So now this cost is a function of who is assigned to what cluster and what those cluster centers are assigned to be. And now because I've set it up this way, the, the CKs are no longer forced to be the centers of the clusters, right? We're gonna make them that way, but I wanna call them reference point. I can also call them reference points because this function, it's so general that it can allow any points to be assigned to any clusters whose reference point can be literally anywhere. It doesn't have to be in the center of the cluster. Okay, so I have my general cost function and I'm gonna change these things independently. I'm gonna change around who is assigned to what cluster and what those cluster centers actually are. Okay, so I want to um, look at, um, I want to look at k-means just as if it's a function of the cluster assignments, okay? So I'm gonna fix the cluster centers and just figure out what the optimal cluster assignments would be to minimize that cost. And of course, that's obvious, which is that you just, um, you just choose the cluster centers um, to, you, sorry, you just choose the cluster assignments to be um, the points that are the closest to that cluster center. Okay, so for instance, for these two cluster centers that I have assigned here, I'm gonna assign all those points to that cluster and then assign all of these points to this other cluster. Okay, cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna fix the cluster assignments and then edit the cluster centers. Okay, so again, what's the best way to assign the cluster centers? And that's obvious, which is just that you, um, you just move the cluster centers to be in the middle of their assigned points. Okay, cool. So, Hopefully you have now a much better understanding of what k-means is actually doing. So I'm going to put this cost here, um, there just for reference. And remember, it depends on both the cluster assignments and the cluster centers. Okay, so now I'm going to put it the algorithm again. And uh, so here you can see that um, it that until we're converged, we're going to assign each point to the closest cluster center, which is the same thing as minimizing the cluster assignments that cost function, leaving the cluster centers fixed. And then when we change each cluster center to be in the middle of its points, what we're doing is um, minimizing that cost over those reference, over the placement of those cluster centers, the placement of those reference points. And then we do this alternating minimization scheme until we're converged and hopefully we minimize that overall cost. Okay, so that's what k-means is actually doing. It's an alternating minimization scheme minimizing this cost over the cluster assignments and the cluster centers. Thanks.